So in this video, I'm not going to bore you with all the specs that you can read online yourself, but I will show you examples of this in use and my recommendation about why this should be your next travel gimbal or travel camera over something like a GoPro for your upcoming travel this summer, especially after all this COVID stuff. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. We're all about creativity in filmmaking. So if that's something that you're into, consider subscribing. So point number one, no one likes shaky footage. And if you're going away for traveling and you come back with shaky footage and you're trying to show your friends or family, they're not gonna love you for it. So this comes with a built-in gimbal. So this top part up here is a gimbal head that helps to stabilize your movement. So with one click, or rather you hold and click, it turns on, and you are good to start filming and using the gimbal to help stabilize your footage. Now item number two is that you can control all of this, you know, while you can control with a little monitor that's on here, you also can control it all from the app, which means you've got a bigger screen to change up more of the settings if you know what you're doing, or at least to view through. So if you want to get yourself some really good, stable footage, you can use this to view on while you hold this in one hand, and given the size and the weight, it's simple to hold in one hand. Now let's get onto these gimbal settings. They're gonna help you get the footage that you want. So the first one, the most common is pitch lock, which let's say you're walking straight and you wanna capture what's to your left, to your right, and there's not necessarily anything too high or too low, so you're not bothered about catching that. Pitch lock is gonna mean that you're going to capture whatever you point the camera at, except for anything too high or too low. So it's not gonna look up or down, it's gonna look straight ahead of you. Perfect for just straight walking, capturing things to the side. And then you have follow mode, which essentially captures anything you point the gimbal at. So looking up high, looking up low, to the left, to the right, point this gimbal and it'll follow and take that shot for you. So it's a great way to be capturing those shots without actually having to think about exactly what you're capturing, but also it can be used very well for cinematic type shots. So next you have gimbal lock, which if you're not too worried about exactly what you're capturing and just want to capture a bunch of stuff, gimbal lock is gonna be your best friend here. So it doesn't matter where I turn this gimbal, the gimbal is always going to stay forward and the camera's gonna capture what's ever in front of you. So, you know, if you're getting distracted every few seconds, looking up here, turn off to the side, the gimbal and camera are still pointed as you're walking down this direction. So the missus or the husband is not gonna get too mad at you when they find that you've captured the wrong thing because you don't have to worry about it anymore. And then finally, we have FPV mode, which by far is the most creative here. Now, if you're just a, you know, someone who's looking to get general shots of wherever you're going, wherever you're looking at, you're unlikely to use this mode. It's a very unique mode. But essentially, wherever you tilt, roll, pan this camera, this gimbal, it's going to capture. So if you roll off to the side, to the other side, notice how it follows. So this is more like a bird's type view so before we get onto my recommendation on this, let's go through uh, some of those specs at a super high level and some of the ins and outs that may make you question if this is right for you. Video captures at 4K, which is huge for this thing, and then at 2.7K and 1080p. So unless you're you know, trying to save space, shoot at 4K to ensure you're getting the best resolution in your footage possible. However, when you start to change the frame rates, so typically frame rates are 24 frames per second, 30, 60, and 120. Whereas in here, you've got all of those, you've also got a 48 frames per second, but the higher frame rate you shoot at, the more of a crop there is in your shot. So you can have to stand further back to ensure you're getting your full shot that you want. Now, that's a bit of an issue when you want to shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second, but it's more of an issue when you come in to shoot slow-mo. So at four times, you don't get much of a crop, but at eight times slow motion, you get a, a rather large crop. So just be careful and keep that in mind when you're trying to shoot, you'll just have to stand further back. No biggie. Then finally, you have a moving time-lapse, which is something you can't get with the time-lapse feature on an iPhone or any other phone. Because of the gimbal, you can set what are called waypoints. So by selecting on the screen and moving to a new point, you can select where you want your time-lapse to start and end. Make sure time lapse is that much more interesting. So this pocket gimbal is awesome, but it does have its drawbacks. So one of those, I mean, while I've been shooting, the battery life has seemed great. It, I haven't had any problems with it. It seems to last a long time, but because you cannot change the battery, I would suggest 
just looking after it. So don't overcharge this thing. Don't put it on charge for hours and hours or leave it overnight. Just make sure you're watching to see if it's topped up or not. Uh, or perhaps even just charging it before you go out for the day and want to start shooting on it. Now, its biggest advantage is also its biggest drawback. So when you're using a gimbal like this, there's one motion that it cannot control, and that's what's called the Z axis or the Z axis, that up and down movement. So as you're walking, you'll find that you may get some up and down movement just because of the way the body moves. Now with bigger, heavier gimbals, like one of these back here, where you have a heavier camera sat on it, you're less likely to get that shake or you're likely to get less of that shake. So it's just something to be wary of with this. And my final point, you will need an SD card for this. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Uh, and if you're gonna be shooting at 4K, I suggest something like a 16 gig or a 32 gig. So how about my recommendation and why this should be your travel camera over something like a GoPro, even a GoPro with inbuilt stabilization. So this is cheaper than a GoPro. And let me say just here, I love GoPros. GoPros are awesome, but this has its place too. So it's cheaper than a GoPro. And with the moving time-lapse feature, you can really get some unique looking shots that you just cannot get on an iPhone or a GoPro. And of course, if you want to visit somewhere new and not looking to spend a ton of cash, this could be the one that really helps you get the footage you want so that you can show your friends and family without them grimacing at the fact that it's shaking all over the place. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown, this review of the Femi Palm, and I hope it gives you a better idea of why you may want this gimbal and how it can help you achieve what you want to achieve. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, do what you got to do, and I will see you guys in the next one.